evening, Melrose. We are back for the start of the 2019-2020 basketball season. Starting out with the header with Melrose Red Raiders versus the Stones Spartans. Yeah, we're looking at an uh, exciting first opening game this season. Uh, Melrose's new coach, Coach Daniel Byrne. Yep, Daniel Byrne. Melrose is uh, starting uh, sophomore Christopher Christopher Paul as uh, their captain, and Christopher, ironically, Cusolito, is out with a uh, foot injury. Yeah, we're expecting a uh, very exciting home opener. Uh, Black or glitch, it's a tip. Chris Paul is taking the ball up. Charlie Borstel, other captain, feeds to Luca. Pump fake. He's backing down, 32 in the post. Broken up play there. Good defense by Stoneham. As number three, Joe Vittorioso takes the ball. Good defense by Chris Paul. In a little defense track. Now is immediately bringing a lot of energy. So here's Captain Hunter Schmidt at the line. And he's going to miss his first shot. So, Will, what are your predictions for tonight's game against... Oh, I think Melrose is going to win an electrifying game by at least 20 points. Yeah, I think this Melrose team has a lot of potential. You know, with young rising stars like Chris, and good leaders like Luka, and uh, Charlie Borstel, very experienced on the varsity team, I think they can do some big problems in the middle sex league. And Luka's going to miss a shot. Look at the rebound. Scoreless first minute of the game. Robert Wiesman, back to McSorley. A lot of ball movement. Marcel finds Luca. He's the ball. And he's going to score first point for Number three, Joe Vitt Vittorioso taking up the ball. He's in good defense by Chris Paul. As Chris Paul almost gets a steal, now he gets one. Wow. The young sophomore looking really active tonight. He's moving wide open as he drives and he oh, yeah. almost. I almost thought he was going to dunk that one. But you know, a nice polite little bit too. Oh, Chris Paul's clapping his hands. He's getting the crowd energetic. Wow. Loving wide open. And he hits the three. Point to the 6'5", Luka Vlakovic, as he finds Brandon McSorley for the three. And wow, this offense is really getting to a hot start now. I thought it was going to be a, a, a slow-paced game like it was last year, but I think this offense is clicking already. Yeah, if I have any advice for Stoneham, is get the ball away from Brandon McSorley. He's a hot shooter, and you do not want to get him this shooter. Oh, yeah. Another captain, Charlie Borstel. He's a real lethal shooter. You don't want to get him open in space. It's just, it just won't end well for you. This ball seems to be getting a lot of the action to the offensive end. As he loses his dribble, gives it to Captain Charlie Bosso. As he pulls it from deep in the Oh, man. Board by Reason. It, it was a heat check. It was a heat check. They're trying to double team. He's Brandon oh, again. For three. He might have tipped it or something. I don't know why Brandon would have all that. You can't really see it from over here. This ball is coming really good. Today's day, in today's day and age, a lot of people value the offensive side of the basketball. But, you know, defense is just as important. And I think Chris Paul has shown us why that defense does, in fact, win championships. Yeah. As a, another missed shot by Stone. Rebound. And just watch this, folks. Wow. Beautiful. 
Wow. Beautiful, beautiful. The seas are beautiful. Wow. So I'm going to try to work the ball around. Just try to get some offense. Bucket by number 32, Mike, Mike Percuccio. Charlie Boy Serpent to the ball, gives it to Luke at the top of the key, gives it to Chris Paul, who gives it to Brandon McSully, wide open in the corner, and oh, he's one for three, but Boy Serpent gets the rebound, and he's fouled. You can see immediately, Elrose is really trying to dish Brandon the ball in that corner, where he's most lethal. Yeah. He's had games last season where he just keeps on scoring and scoring. Yeah, growing up with Brandon at the Y, you do not want to leave that boy open in the corner. Oh, sorry. Captain Boy Serpent has scored first points this season. Free throw. As Chris Paul and Robert Beach are being checked out by uh, Ryan Marr, the junior, and Kirby Maxwell, the sophomore. Guard. Charlie, Lee, Sounds like it's an offense working. They're trying to capitalize on the heat that Chris Paul created, but now he's off the court. Oh, good defense by this team. And Lou gives it to Kirby. And Kirby takes it up and misses it, but Charlie with the punch. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Full lay, boy style. Full lay. Wow. I think that's just a small uh, sneak peek of what this offense really can be. Yeah. Wow. Very explosive. Charlie Borstel is getting Patted on the back for tremendous efforts. Try to stop the momentum from this seemingly up pace Melrose offense. So let's see what they can do here. As the ball is kicked. And to get the ball back. Number four, Connor Gilmartin, getting down the ball. Beasley is number 21. Don't lag it. That's how that's going to be. Luke is super frustrated because he knows he's going to be the big player to do that. the fast break. That's 6 5 frame. No one's stopping him today, man. As number three, the captain, Joe. Joe. Calling Joe tonight, Will. All right. So you can find Hunter Schmidt. His name is. He's going to have a ball around more. Or he's nearly taken away by the sophomore Kirby. John Ball's going to miss, and Captain Borstel with the ball. Oh. Pass fake and huh. Almost, almost. in the three. Shots oh, contested, but Brandon McSorley finds it to Ryan Marr, and Ryan Marr hits it. Wow. That's amazing. That is amazing. Number four, Carnegie Martin finds it number 21, Hunter Schmidt. And Hunter Schmidt goes up and is fouled by Captain Luka Blakovic. Very questionable call, but we'll let that slide. And the Hunter's already 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Hopefully Melrose, Melrose hopes he's going to keep up that pace and not score. Guys, I'm looking at this roster. 
This is a very uh, senior-led roster, as in three of the five out of the starting five are seniors. But we do have uh, Chris Paul, actually, four of the five, actually, excuse me, are seniors, and Chris Paul, the only one being, a, being uh, not a senior. So what does it say about just, like, leadership in this program now? That, yeah, yeah, the seniors are really taking the reins of this team, of orchestrating practices, keeping the team together and close, making sure everyone's involved. And I think it shows that there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of uh, heart around this team. And I think they can make a deep play at the coach if they uh, keep this up. Yep. Or at least make it to the playoffs. Be a foul. So I'm inbounding the ball number three, Joe. And Joe is getting defended by number 23, David Levine. And that's going to head out of bounds. So I was talking with uh, Captain Borstel. And uh, I was wondering, uh, what, are you, what are your goals this year for the Melrose team? And he told me, oh, we're taking the league title. That is his aspiration. He hopes they can do this with their new coach. That is a bold statement, right? a bold statement indeed. But this offense is kind of slowing down. We're red hot in the beginning of the first quarter, but it's kind of slowing down, not making as many shots. Um, defense is still great, though. That's a good move by my man, Joe. And all travel. Always will get the ball back. Looking at the bench on the Melrose side, uh, one of the captains is hurt, Chris Cusolito. Just came off an amazing football season, was named league MVP, and brought home the Division IV trophy. We hope to get you back soon, Chris. Hope to get you back soon. Yeah, that's right. He can't wait to get back on the court. You know, Chris is just an all-around competitor. You know, uh, just freshman starting on varsity. Uh, what? Nice, nice three-point shot by Stone. But yeah, that Cusolito kid. That Cusolito kid. He's pretty athletic, huh? Yeah. Four-year varsity player. All of those sports. It's kind of crazy to think about. I was definitely uh, looking forward to his return. Captain to Brian Marr, who's going to find Luca again. And going to take a contested shot in the paint. And, and one by the nice big giant Luca Black and Mitch. You know, I feel like in a basketball world, Luca stands out because he has such a big frame. Like he kind of reminds me of like a like a defensive end in football. But You'd be surprised about that quickness. Yeah, he he moves. He got the quickness like a butterfly. He's light on his feet, and he just knows how to move around with the ball. That just makes him even more solid. Ooh, a great defensive hustle effort by Ryan Marr. Now his bench is getting wild for this one. With eight seconds left in the corner. Stone is looking to score just before it ends. Within five minutes. Hunter Schmidt's going to uh, turn over the ball to Melrose. So There's two seconds before the quarter ends. Charles is going to hook it up. Right and we'll be back for the second quarter of this head-to-head -head matchup between Stoneham and Melrose. back and now that I'm um, taking a break I forgot to mention our names well if you didn't know already it's the dynamic duo Makai Dunton and, and I'm Will Durant yep and we'll bring you the supreme high school division four basketball gameplay and Stoneham is trying to come back from this what was it seven point deficit I'm not the greatest in math so it takes me a little bit I'm sorry That's Will Cut that down to a five-point deficit. I was getting nervous. They're really creeping up on them, aren't they? Yeah. Speaking of math, shout out to Miss Van Blenis, our math teacher, holding yeah. it down. She teaches us math. She is definitely a math teacher that teaches us math. Ryan Mall is calling for the ball. He seems to be wide open. Charlie feeds him, kind of overthrows the pass. Robert Wilson pump fakes. Post moves to nice Luca and the oh. But he's not, man, he's not able to. Uh, 
quite connect. Man, that Luca kid in the post is just unstoppable. I'm telling you about the coaches. Six. Coaches, when they're watching film, they say, watch number 22. Yeah. Don't lose him because he's quick. Well, that's what happens when you're a Northeastern commit. Charlie wide open, well slightly contested at the end, and Charlie's kind of on a cold streak right now. Um, he has about four points, but has missed three of his last three shots. But great defense by Chris Paul, by the way. He's really looking like the front runner for defense to play the year already. He is, he is just putting on the straps. That's a young Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, Melrose has a lot of key defensive players, lockdown players such as Shane, R4 Mar, and this young young talent, Chris Paul. Yeah, it's kind of like a dynamic duel. You got you have CP3 guarding the perimeter, and then you have Luca guarding the paint. And there's nothing else you can really do. You know, it's don't really a miracle. Stone him scored at all at this point. Yeah. Their most points, like scoring, is when Chris Paul was on the bench, so that shows a lot. And I don't think they I don't think they've scored once since Chris Paul came back in. Well actually I'm wrong, they scored that too. But it's only two points. That's right, it is only two points. As they're trying to find at least two more here. And that's gonna be a lousy offensive effort by Stoneham. It's gonna be Melrose. <laughs> Junior Ryan Marr, also Super Bowl champ. Brings up the ball. We'll go back and forth with Chris Paul, and then feed it to Luca. Chris Paul at the right elbow gives it to Luca with a 10 foot jumper and is missed, but great hustle by number two, Robert Wieson, as Ryan Mar gives the rebound, gives it to Charlie Boystel as he shoots again. And, uh, Can't quite get hot just yet, but Luca's going to get the rebound and have a tech, uh, shifty pass to Chris Paul, who was not quite ready for it. You know, a good thing about Charlie is that he's a volume shooter. Because when he gets hot, he's hot, man. But the downside of that is that he can go on sometimes of a cold streak. But it's all worth it when he's dropping 40 points and a half. So, oh, that's a Chris nice Paul move by Chris Paul. Move and, uh, Nearly finishes. But great hustle by Chris Paul. Great hustle. The young sophomore showing already imposing his will on Stoning. This is this is great to see. You know, in a varsity program, it's usually from sophomores and older. Sophomores in 10th grade, well, just, oh, as Charlie Borstel gets the ball, and he gets it up and, oh, oh almost an and one. But like I was saying, sophomores in a varsity program usually don't get that much love. And any sophomore, that usually gets playing time. They're not really as experienced, but watching Chris Paul play, I already feel like he's been playing on this team for 10 years. The talk around town is that he's going to be uh, taking Chris Consolito's spot for the remainder of the season. Well, that's just naysay, Will. I don't want to start rumors on this Melrose High TV broadcast. Stoneham has this reputation in the six league, but this team that you just don't really take seriously. But tonight, they're definitely showing us why they should be a force to be reckoned with. And obviously, some, some good middle sex league competitors. But also, I feel like the reason why the game is so close is that just a bunch of missed shots on Melrose's end, and you expect that a lot. It's the first game of the season. You gotta get your flow going. I'd like to mention number 20, Cooper Ward, out here doing his thing. A lot of uh, miscommunication by Melrose. Maybe they have 11 over for Storm. He's going to try another three. Cutting it down to just a four point game. I think this is where that leadership comes in from the two captains, Charlie and Luca. A lot of young guys on the floor right now. They got to lead right. the way. As he finds Robert Reese in He said this is a five group and layup. You know, it happens sometimes, it happens. That's right, he's been playing a good game in the paint so far. Good defense, great rebounding. He's just gotta be able to come up. That's a beautiful dish by Stoneham, nearly was 
Great defense by Hooper Ward in the South Carolina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan Mars going to shoot out to Captain Force. He's going to throw it right back. bit of life is coming from that Melrose bench and I think this is the energy that is just needed right now in a game that seems kind of slow that was picking up really fast in the beginning of the first quarter but kind of slowing down something like that getting the bench hype as you know this game's all about momentum and once you're going you're going it's hard to get stopped so a uh, little junior to junior pass Hooper Ward to Ryan Marr here Hooper Ward's a lethal shooter you really don't want to get him in open space if you're stoning that is Ryan Mars going to find Brandon McSorley in the corner who finds Borstel in the paint. A little hesitation, and he's going to be I think, I think Charlie's 8 for 5 right now since uh, that, that big put-back layup. But as Ryan Mars threw the ball, to take it away. two on three fast, but you'll see what those can do. Charlie with the hesitation, he gets to the top. And now he's 0 for 6, uh, kind of on a cold spell here. Charlie's looking to hope to break that curse. Um, as he goes up and plays some good defense. Ooh, and a hard, a very hard foul. Well, you know, 6'5", 250, Luca. I bet he didn't feel a thing. Balls up, finds Luca, jabs up to the left, finds Mar, contested three, and is not hitting, but he gets his own rebound. Good offensive forward, great. Uh, it's a play by Luca to tap it over to him. Yeah. Especially when you get these offensive rebounds, it really extends the play. As Ryan Mar is wide, wide open, open and oh, almost hit. And Hooper gets the rebound. And Hooper tries to find Brandon McSorley, but right turnover right to number 32. Shout out to number 32 for making Mr. Benedetto's coffee. Uh, number 10, senior Matt Morrissey is looking to be checked in the game along with Charlie Borstel. Well, not quite Charlie, but Matt is definitely going to be checked in at the next dead ball as Luca's wide open and he gets a contested yes. yes. A little handsy back there, but Luca gets one up and almost an one. And he's going to be taking that to the free throw line. This Monroe's offense needs some life right now. They have been missing a lot of shots, but they're not giving up. They're getting a lot of offensive rebounds, which is a sloppy job by Stone to let that happen. You know, I think this new coach, Coach Bur Coach Burns is, um, you know, he's he's doing his thing, you know. It, a lot of the guys are super happy to have him, but he hasn't quite clicked just yet in this uh, close match against him. Yeah, Coach Burns is really hard to just, like, come from a different school and then come into a whole new team and then just try to get everyone together. Um, you know, it's this is what you expect when you have a new coach. You don't expect to be the, the best team in the league when at the first game when you're the coach. So, the coach is growing with the players. You know, the coach is growing with the players. So, this is definitely a learning experience for Coach Burns. And it's almost stolen by Ryan Mark. And it is stolen by Ryan Mark. Matt Morrissey gets it. Great defensive Kirby's taking the ball. Luca is driving with a floater. Oh, and yeah. it is in. Lil Lou with the bucket. He's uh, definitely taking the offensive as he leads Melrose with about eight points. Oh, and Ryan Mark takes a hard fall to the ground, looking for a foul. And almost another steal by Ryan Mark. Questionable call on the reaching foul. Um, I would say that's good defense, but hey, I'm not a ref. It's okay. Thank you. 
three, Joe. And Joe finds number 11, Max. And Max pump fakes, kicks it to the right, and tries to go up, and he gets it. Great defense, too. That was really powerful. Yeah, when you're playing defense as good as that, you can't really be mad about the results like that. So here's sophomore Kirby. He's going to find Luca, Ryan Mar, addition. Matt, back to Luca. He's not going to quite get a handle of it. Surprisingly, Stone has crept back up into this game, only down by three points going into the second half. Just under a minute of the first half. And Stone is looking to cut that uh, deficit down. <laughs> Now it's six now. I don't know, they're doing magic on the scoreboard. I don't know. Here's Donham on the offense, trying to work the ball around. An impenetrable ball defense by Melrose. 16 seconds left, and as they pull it three, he gets it. Wow. That is sick. Going down by five with seven seconds left. Five, four, three, two. Brandon McSorley wide open. You don't want to leave him open. Melrose really going to cut it. Well, I'm your host, Makai. And I'm Will Duran. We'll be back for the second half of this Mario's game. All right, and we're back after halftime. Burroughs has a fairly strong lead, 27 over 22. Strong is an uh, interesting word for this game. For I this think lead. the score doesn't accurately represent just how well Morris has been playing. They've just been missing on a lot of opportunities. Stoneham doesn't really seem to have a lot of control in this game, but they're doing well with what they have been given. Yeah, this Melrose team is looking for some senior leadership from our captains, Charlie Borstel and Luka Vlakovic. Uh, hopefully they can turn things around and try to go back to the offense they were running in the very first minutes of this game because it really was looking like a really, a really good team. But you can't say hot forever, but you can't say cold forever either. So let's see what happens in the second half of basketball. So there's Chris Paul with his, I believe, third point of the night. He started off with the first point of the night, that shows he pulled off a lot. There he is with a nice takeaway, and he got a A good defensive play by Stone. So Luke's going to find Charlie. Makes his way to Chris Paul. Luca. Brandon looking to take a shot, but he's going to pass it to Luca. He'll take a jump shot. And he, he makes it. Wow. Wow. Maybe this is what they need. Great defense by Charlie Borstel. Great defense. Got Rob Reeson trailing him. Number four, wide open. Getting closed out by Charlie Borstel. Number three, Joe. Number 11. go here we go it's stolen by Chris Paul Chris Paul in the fast break and Chris Paul goes for the layup and it is good tapped it right off the electric play I was really needed that to get some momentum yep tapped it 10 point lead at this yep point. tapped it right off the glass too great defense by Charlie oh wait that is not Charlie Borstel that is Robert Wieson and number 11 a good spin move but it is blocked beautiful play by, by Brandon, Brandon Borstel and if you can see this bench right now they are ecstatic right now and this momentum is getting kind of crazy. Stoneham, Stoneham can't control it. Let's see if Stoneham can come back after we come back from this timeout break. And great pass by Charlie. And Charlie goes up and Charlie. almost drops it in. Beautiful captain, captain connection there. Money man Borstel looking to take command of this game. And wow, I just can't get over how good of the pass that was from Luca. That was almost a full court pass. And great strength. 
A great play. Looking like a young Speaking Tom Brady out there. As I'm looking down in the fan section, it is very packed for this home opener against Stoneham. Great move by Luca. And Luca gets some separation and he hits it. Dirty Lou. That's going to hit the highlight tape. I'm sorry, number 11, but you just made the little Lou highlight tape. And a three on one fast break. And Luca tries to close out, pump fake, and then a Beautiful great block by, by Robert Eason. And Hunter Schmidt's going to miss the layup for Stoneham. Chris Paul's going to get the rebound. And Lou Lou getting the ball to Charlie Borstel, who can hopefully make a shot. No, he cannot, but great rebound as he gets it up, and it is almost Another in. He gets shot. his own rebound again. Ah, almost. You can see the disappointment in Lou Lou. A lot of very handsy down there, but it, that's what it is in the paint. It's, it's the trenches, man. It's going to be a lot of things that aren't called, but that's just how the lifestyle is. And a great block by Luca. So many great plays by Melrose tonight, but just taken down by a lot of missed opportunities on offense. And now I'm looking up at the score. Melrose is up by 11 right now, and they're looking like a very different team than they were than the second quarter of this game. They're up by 11, but it feels like they're up by 30. They've just been missing out on so many offensive shots. Yeah, Melrose have been taking absolute control of this game. And as Luca creates some more separation, oh, almost hits a nice shot. And as Robert Good Wiesen rebound by Wiesen, but he's going to miss a shot. Robert Wiesen himself is looking for some of his first points tonight, I believe. I think Robert Wiesen actually has yeah, won two points, one basket, two points. One basket does usually two points, sometimes three. That's right. It's basketball. On Brando so Brandon in the corner the where corner. he's hot. Oh, got a good rebound by Stoneham. Can't seem to find the groove. Um, you know, that's what you expect this early in the season. First game of the season. You know, not everyone can get in the groove. But Luca takes no time off. He has a good defense and great shot by number four, Connor Gil Martin. As Norris is hoping to respond to that three pointer with one of their own, hopefully. And Charlie hesitation to the right. And as he's driving, pulls up a very contested shot. Good house by Robert Reese, but it was for nothing. You know, I can't help to say the impact that uh, Charlie's missed shots have had on this game. You know, it's cost him a lot of possessions, and I haven't been keeping that much track, but he's near like eight to nine missed shots ever since that putback layup. And you can only help to just think about how many more points they could have scored if Charlie just didn't shoot at all. Yeah, and it's not just Charlie. The whole Melrose team has missed at least 20 shots tonight. Just so many missed opportunities, but they've had such a great offensive rhythm tonight if only they could complete on this place. And Charlie is wide open and he takes it up and a great move and he finally breaks his cold spell of nine missed shots in a row and that extends Melrose's lead to ten. So Stoneham's been hitting a lot of three-point shots tonight to keep them in the game. If through that mode, it would be much more than only 10 points a night. Luke with 12 points on the night. The two captains leading the team with 12 and 10, respectively. Very respectively. Find his buddy Max. Finds number three. He's gonna take the shot and just miss. Rebound by Luca. He finds Charlie wide Martin. open again. I've seen this one before, Mackay. Wow, this is like something out of 2K. Like 299 overall created players and an almost great hustle by Kirby, the sophomore. And that full court pass is just something out of a storybook man he's looking like a young lebron james with the full court Shaq passes and, Kobe. and charlie ties luca with 12 points on the night both combined for 24 out of the 40 points scored quick math well how much is that he's about uh um, I, I don't know that's a little that's a little more than 50. what's that 55 percent maybe something like that i don't have a calculator on me but Shout out Ms. Van Blenis. Math teacher. Oh, oh no, great that. steal by Brandon McStorley. And as Ryan Marr takes the ball up, 
He drives right, and he feeds Brandon McSorley with a nice pass as Murray goes up by 12 points. Oh. Correction, 14 points. Actually, this Melrose team is rolling right now as number 11 is wide open. But gives up the wide open pass for some more ball movement. Looking like the San Antonio Spurs over here. Number 21, the captain. Pump fakes. Finds number 11 at the top of the key. Number 11. Oh, the time is going Ryan down. Number 11. And this defense is really just imposing this well on the Stoneham offense as they lock them up for 24 whole, 30 whole seconds. And the Melrose bench is definitely feeling that one as Brandon McSorley inbounds it to Ryan Marr. Ryan Marr finds the sophomore Kirby, gives it to Luca, and Luca with a full head of steam and almost and it's almost take him the line. Luca trying to go up to 14 points on the night. And see a lot of encouragement from his coach. He's very proud of number 22. Wow. I think it's safe to say that this is a very different team that we saw in the second quarter matchup. What do you think changed? What do you think that Coach Burns did in the gameplay to change this up? Well, I think um, we've seen two, uh, a lot of made shots this quarter by Charlie Borsell, who just had to lock in for his first game of the season. We've also seen a lot of um, offensive rebounding like we had in the second quarter, but it's finally working out to convert into actual points this quarter. Also, I couldn't help to notice that the amount of three-pointers taken uh, has dimmed down a lot since that second quarter. That's uh, right. A lot of the three-pointers have been taken from Charlie Borstel, and at this level of the game, those are very, very high-risk, high-reward shots. And, you know, you can't just be taking a risk in a game this close. But I'm glad Melrose is able to find their rhythm as number 11 is wide open and hits the three. Three-point shot for 11. He's very leading his team in points by a wide margin at this point, really keeping Stoneham still in the game. As Luca almost with a full out of steam down the lane. But Luca almost wide open, passes to Brandon McSorley. A nice pass. He's he going to find Brandon McSorley. This Melrose team is looking ecstatic right now. It is amazing. Well, it's finally shaping out to be the game we expected. Yeah. Well, we'll be back after this timeout. And we're live as we were just sharing some jokes up here in the press box. Shout out the gang, doing their thing. Coming to you, giving you the most elite live sports high school broadcast. As good defense by Charlie Borstel, almost pokes the ball. That would have been a for sure fast break dunk by Charlie on his end. And as number 21 misses a layup, gets his own rebound and makes it again. A little celebration. A little sloppy defense there. We almost got a steal from Melrose, but Hunter Schmidt is going to be able to get this and one and bring a lot of momentum back to Stoneham. He's looking to cut the lead down to only 10 points, which he does not. I see Mr. Chelly doing the scoreboard. Shout out to him uh, after finishing another yet great volleyball season, making it all the way to the semifinals. Contested jump shot by Borstel. Great rebound by Ryan Marr, who's going to dish it out to Luca at the top. Good ball movement by Melrose. Luca being triple team finds Brandon McSorley once again, who gives it back to Luca, and Luca with mad contact. He's not able to. Oh, great defense by Charlie. Ooh. Charlie is really locking up number three, Joe. Oh, and. Great pump fake by him and a good move. Oh, a beautiful move by number 11. It's not almost, quite able to. Uh, almost made the highlight tape. You know what they say, if you don't make it, it doesn't count. That's right. So yeah, as this third quarter is winding down, Melrose is up by 11 points, 44 to 33. This game is definitely picking up. And I can see the noticeable differences from last year. Obviously, you have a bunch of new faces, old faces returning. But in just the style of play, 
I just feel like this offense has a little bit more explosive. And Look at that. Speaking of explosives, Ryan Marr right off the pass. Wow. Before his feet even touch the ground. Now Marrows is really trying to keep the momentum up. Walk down defense on that side of the court. With 11 seconds left. And almost would have been a fast it. break. And not a lot of time left for Stoneman to come back in this game. They have to come back in this fourth quarter with a whole new game plan if they want to win this. But I don't know. The Mellows offense is looking like the 2019 Ravens offense. It's unstoppable. And just great, great energy from this Mellows team. And if you can see the bench, they are There's ecstatic the defense right I was now. talking about from Boucher. He's known for his clamps around this team. Great defense. Five seconds left. Four, three, two, one. And the, I don't think he knows that the clock is winding down, but now he's going to go into this fourth quarter, up 46 to 33. I'm Makai. I'm Will Durant. We'll be back for this fourth quarter. Jokes coming up from this press box, and we're just having a we're just having a blast up here, giving you this elite high school sports coverage. As Captain Charlie Borstel is inbounding to Chris Paul, who's been having a pretty decent night for a sophomore. Yeah, definitely a good debut in Melrose. You know, it's one of those things where the scoreboard doesn't show at all, but you can definitely see by watching this game, he is definitely running this Melrose offense. A great jump shot by Captain Rico. He's definitely feeling himself. Scores 14 points. I think Luka has 16 points right now. And now that I remember. There's another basket. The Stoneham head coach is very enthusiastic right now, despite being down by 13 points. But I think energy is everything you need right now in this, in this game. That's right. A passionate coach is a good coach. Great. Great pump fake, and an even better pass by Charlie Borstel as you know, shot by Luka. Stew? Really getting it's hot. 18 points on the night. This is amazing. 18 points. Wide open, number 32. It must not be a shooter. I'm looking over at the Melrose bench. I see uh, Junior, Andrew Norton Jefferson, uh, football player, state champ. Congrats to him. Um, should have been named League All-Star, but that's not of my business. Now I'm looking at the scoreboard, and Merrill's has accumulated 50 points at the beginning of this fourth quarter. And this is such a different game from when we were covering it last year. A lot more high scoring. 50 was a very rare number to see on the scoreboard. Yeah, a lot of 40 games, like maybe 30s if it was like a tough game. But I do remember that overtime game last year against Watertown. It was in the 70s, which was a really fun game to watch. I wish we covered that one. And as Sona is only down by 13 now. Well, actually they were down by 13 when I was talking about it, but scored some points while I was talking. And as Luka Blakovich finds Ryan Moore, 10-foot jump shot, and it is in. Oh, and I think Morris is looking to play some full court trap, and I see a wide open. I don't know why he take the shot, but he sacrifices it for even a better shot, but too bad Stone couldn't capitalize on this. And off the good defensive effort by number 32 after a deep dish pass. Looking for Boris, He's trying to find Luca. He was for sure scoring again. No. Stoneham is down by 15 points right now, but the game is not over until it's over. So I don't think Melrose should take the foot off the gas pedal anytime soon. They're really trying to set the tone for the entire season tonight. Looking at this uh, considerable weak opponent on their schedule. Stoneham has a great of a roster as they'd like. Well, maybe. Well, maybe uh, some miss the Middlesex Bulls after all. Great block by Lou Lou. 
Speaking of the highlight reel, that's another one he's going to be adding. Welcome to the Little Lou highlight reel. Northeastern Class of 2025, here we come. Stoner's leading score number 11. Going to get something going on offense. He's well aware they're down 15, and he's going to take a nice floater to cut that down. 13. I feel like you've been saying this 13 number a lot, and you know what today is? Friday the 13th. That's a weird coincidence. Hmm. Well, speaking of 13, there's a foul. A smart offensive charge by uh, number 32. A lot of 13s in this game. A lot of 13s. Great defensive effort by senior Brandon McSorley. Now that I'm thinking about it, in my English class, we have these uh, uh, quizzes, these vocab quizzes. We just took our 13th one today. So it's kind of it's kind of creepy how the number 13 is creeping up on this spooky, spooky day. Weird. As number 21 tries to end the bound, inbound the ball, it's number four, and it's a deep, uh, good offensive uh, hustle by Chris Owen. Ball. Even That's better really hustle. Really fantastic. Charlie Borstel is. I don't know what Charlie did in that locker room during halftime, but he definitely turned it up this this half. He might have had some of that uh, Michael Jordan. Uh, what were they had? In Space Jam? Who, who was that, that water they were drinking? That juice? I never watched Space Jam. You never watched Space Jam? Oh, and a good steal by Ryan Maher. Ryan Maher in the fast break, and he goes up and none. Foul. Hard foul, but, you know, when you're playing like this, you expect some hard fouls. That's right. I would have loved to see Captain Luca taking that. We know he can really slam that ball down. Yeah, especially uh, number 10, Matt Morrissey. He can really throw one down. He's, he's a force to be reckoned with. Shout out Kirby, he's getting in the game right now. Uh, R4 now brings his game to a That's Chris Paul. 14 point lead. Subbing out, Kirby's head. Luka Blackovich with 18 points on the night. Uh, approximately, um, we don't really have the best scorekeepers in the nation, but it's me, I'm not the best scorekeeper. It's him, it is Will. But we promise next broadcast we'll come back with even better coverage, even better stats, try to give you the best high school sports Most experience. Most elite high school broadcasting. And as Luka, and Luka's with, find his 20th point I think, I think, approximately, approximately sweet, a squiggly sign equals about. the score I'm really excited for the season to come and like you were saying at the beginning of the game Captain Charlie Borstel said he wants to win the league and after this game I think the rest of the league has something, has something to be uh, afraid of it was a pretty okay point and you know I think this sets the tone for all of Melrose winter sports because as we know the fall sports for Melrose seems to be the dominant sports as a Coach Morris and, oh, oh, and Charlie Borstel straight breaks the shot and it is stuck to the rim and ran into the rescue. Oh wow, that's amazing. Um, Charlie Borstel just works wonders. He can get the ball stuck in between the rim and the backboard like no, no other. other. Oh man, great, mind, great minds think alike. And like I was saying uh, about the fall sports, it seems to be the dominant uh, seasonal sport. And, as, and he misses, but it is rebounded by oh, Robert Beeson. Wow, the, the YMCA guard, Ryan, Robert Beeson. It looks like Stoneham Stone can't Stone. even get off of their side of the court. And Charlie here. Borstel, he's really looking like he has a lot of energy. I don't know what he had in that locker room, but he should take some more of it. <laughs> and well, let's keep it uh, MIAA legal here. Well, obviously, I'm obviously talking about a nice Gatorade pouch, obviously. Stoneham finally is able to pass half court after a long
long series of Melrose scores who have really had their foot on their throats this whole game, this whole fourth half, fourth quarter, excuse me. That would be too many halves. Too many, too many. I think it would be eight quarters, something like that. I don't know. I'm not really that good at math. But before I was uh, rudely interrupted by Charlie's absolute brick, um, we, we, uh, fall sports. Fall sports. You know, I think the volleyball team had a really good season. The football team had a very good season breaking home the state title. Uh, girls cross country has been amazing. So has the soccer team. You know, there's a lot of great sports in the fall. And actually, now that I remember, uh, Coach Morris, the head coach of the football team, and Coach Tucci the head coach of the girls cross country team, they're both named um, Coach of the Year in each of their um, wow, fields. Those coaches. Uh, coach Burns looking up to lock up that vote after tonight's very impressive win over a surprisingly competitive Stoneman team. And honestly, looking at the score, this isn't even the beginning to this Melrose offense and what they can possibly do. And it's just crazy to think that a team that doesn't even have their captain is just so this explosive. Because as we know, Chris Cusolito, he's been playing on this, he's been student up for varsity ever since he was a freshman. And to think that without him they're doing this, it's just great. So Chris, we hope you get back soon. Get well better. Get well better. Get well better. Get <laughs> some water. So here's Kirby. With just two and a half minutes left in this first game of the season. A great pass by captain to captain. And Luke's gonna, Luke is gonna get fouled. At the line looking for his 21st point of the night. And the crowd yeah, is going wild for the junior, Andrew Norton Jefferson, former state champion. Would he be former or would he be current? What happened to him? Let's just call him a state champion. Once a state champion, always a state champion. Yep. Poor Reggie Bush. Poor Reggie Bush. So Hooper Ward's going to check back in. And Charlie Borstel clocking out, which seems like to be the for the last time. Um, only uh, two starters remain from those right now with Robert Reason. And that makes it one with Luca checking out. The crowd is going crazy as Andy Norton has just walked on the field. And the crowd has been even more energetic than Luca's block. Well, I said field, and this is not football. Let me go drink some more of this tea. This game is sponsored by Arizona Ice Tea. <laughs> Oh man, jokes in the press box are the best. But really, Arizona iced tea is delicious. As Matt Moe gets a great steal as he finds Kirby on the fast break, and Kirby goes up and a great layup, and he just doesn't get it. But man, this iced tea, man, it's it's, it's great, bro. It's great. He's over there in the back, just pouring some pouring some tea in himself for himself. <laughs> That's right, Moe's is finally starting to cool off with a cabin around about 60 points on the night. You can expect uh, just a few more plays here and there, but really there's uh, no more starters left except for Robert Wiesen. Last time, kind of cut that deficit down inch by inch. Great offensive. Excuse me, great defensive rebound by AJ. Good ball movement by these players on Melrose. Kirby's gonna take a shot. And it's gonna be rebounded by Robert Wiesen in the corner. He finds Hooper back to Wiesen in the corner for a wide open three. And he's just gonna miss it. Almost, almost. Great offensive rebound by Matt Morrissey. He's a very technical, excuse me, tactical player. You know, he's just getting his very uh, first few minutes uh, right now, but I do think he has the potential to be a great <laughs> Andrew Norton Jefferson with a great hustle rebound, and the crowd is actually loving it right now. And as Andrew getting in the post, finds Matt Morrissey wide open for the three, and he almost hits it, but it's rebounded by Robert Wiesen and flushing it out of bounds call. 
With only one minute and 13 seconds left, you can still hear a lot of excitement in this crowd as Mauro's team is looking to go 1-0 on the season. Great opening night against Sony. Amazing opening night. But when this game ends, don't go anywhere as we'll be back for the second of our doubleheader against Ooh. And Kirby with He's the three. He knows it. And he knows it. That was a heat check. But don't go anywhere because we'll be back for the second part of our doubleheader against the, the same team actually, Stoneham, as the girls will go up. And be here for all of our doubleheaders this MIAA 2019-2020 basketball season because it will be hosted by the best of the most best. elite. The most elite commentators. Man, this is just a very impressive win by uh, Melrose. And having such a cold second quarter, this team can score way more points. And I wouldn't be surprised if we're, if we're talking triple digits in one of these games. Matt Morrissey, floor general, finds Kirby, a red-hot shooter, gives it back to Matt Morrissey. Matt Morrissey finds Robert Wiesen, who almost gets and Andrew Norris Jefferson, and a great hustle play by AJ. But it is not for none. It is all for none. But, uh, Gonna dish it around. You know, uh, oh, and Andrew Norman with a great steal. Great steal, great defense. And he's just using his big body to just push people out the way. It's amazing. Just like he did on the gridiron. Oh, man. I'm gonna get me started. Did you know Melrose won the uh, Division Four Super Bowl? Fun fact, fun fact, but. Triple out the ball, and that is the ball game, folks. Melrose wins this game, and people 1 and 0. Uh, 63 44 is the final score. And don't go anywhere. The girls will go up against Stoneham at 7 o'clock. I'm your host, Makai. I'm Will Durant. And I will see you soon.